Hi everyone, I'm Americo Cunha from Rio de Janeiro State University, and I will present the work mo entitled Modeling and Analysis of Vibration on a, an Aero Cable Car System with Moving Mass. This was done in collaboration with Professor Cesar Fonseca, Dr. Guilherme Sampaio, Dr. Geraldo Rebouças, and Dr. Marcelo Pereira. Well, you can see here an image of Rio de Janeiro City, which is the home, uh, home city from most of the authors. Okay, this is the most iconic part of the city. You can see in the back the Sugarloaf Mountain, okay? And it's very famous among any other things because it has a, a cable car system, okay? Which transport people from the bottom part to the upper part of the mountain, okay? So this cable car is very old, almost centenary. And, and you can see here in the left a uh, picture from the real cable car system, okay? So this is a vibratory system, okay? Uh, understand very well the how this kind of system uh, vibrates. It's interesting, not only by curiosity, but by engineering purposes, because it's essential to ensure the comfort and most important, the safety of the passengers. And not only in the case of Rio de Janeiro, because cable car systems are uh, very common in all parts of the world. You can see here some pictures which show uh, cable car systems in Oregon and in Spain, okay? So uh, a typical cable car system, uh, it should be called a two cable car system instead of a cable car system because it has two cables, one for supporting purposes and another one for pulling the, the cable, okay? As you can see here in this picture. Uh, I've been going to show now uh, a video uh, of a typical cycle of operation of this type of mechanical system. Okay, you can see here the cable car from Rio de Janeiro, and you see the car in, in the back arriving uh, in, in the bottom part of the mountain, okay? And you can observe that the, the pulling cable vibrates a lot and, and vibrating in a very complex pattern, okay? You can see transversal vibrations, and this is what we are interested in, in understand better the, the how this kind of vibration uh, affect the the movement of the mass of the of the car okay so our goals here are twofold we want to construct a mathematical model that's representative in some sense of the typical behavior of uh, a real cable car system and we wanted to investigate the influence of some specific parameters of this model in the nonlinear dynamical system so uh, in the left, you can see here uh, a typical cable car illustration, and we are going to model this system here by this mechanical model, this idealization in the right, okay? Our model, our mechanical model is composed of two cables, um, one mass and one spring, okay? The mass emulates the car, okay? So we consider this car as a lumped mass that you can see here in purple. And the two cables, the two cables of the system, the, the rail cable, which supports the car, and the pulling cable, which pulls and induces the movement of the, of the car, are represented here. The difference is that uh, the upper cable will behave like a cable uh, uh, clumped in the in the two extremes with uh, a moving load. Okay, you can consider this car as a moving load acting in the cable, and uh, the bottom cable uh, it will be a variable length cable. Okay, uh, if this car is here in this position, the cable has a, a length, a total length equal to L zero. But as the movement starts, the length of the cable reduces, okay? And of course, this will have a tremendous impact on the dynamic behavior of this kind of system. So first, we needed to define the stiffness of this support here. And for this, uh, we use this approximation here. We, we, pick the, we consider the load, the weight of the car as a moving force translating along this cable, okay? And we divide this force by the displacement in the middle of this, of this path, 
okay? The, the, this is a classical system which is well understood in the literature. So we have an analytical formula for the displacement of the cable in this situation. So we use this classical approximation here to compute this displacement here and the rate to give you an estimation of the stiffness. And for the bottom cable, for the cable with variable length, uh, we employ uh, analytical formulation, okay? We employ Hamilton principle to derive the model equations, okay? You can see the energy functionals here, the kinetic energy, the potential energy, okay? And, and you have a distributed mass part and a lumped mass part, okay, in both functionals, you have a, a distributed potential energy here and a lumped and a, a potential energy here. After we employ the, the calculus of variation formalism, we arrive in these equations of motion here, okay, supplemented by these two boundary conditions, okay. This is an initial boundary value problem, but not a simple one. I bring your attention that the length here is time dependent. So the boundary of this problem moves, changes with time, okay? To solve this, we employ the multiple scale method, okay? Where we introduce a small, a slow time scale, okay? Defined in this way here with this small parameter that you can see here, okay? And with this approach, we are able to discretize the equation of motion arriving in an expression for the equation of motion, uh, the, I discretize the equation of motion of this form here, okay? With a mass operator, or with a gyroscopic operator and a stiffness operator. For the first analysis, we are not considering the damping. And we construct a two-mode approximation taking n equal to two, okay? And we are going to investigate here the effect of these two, the, some parameters in this two-mode approximation. Uh, in this, equation here that you can see, the two-mode approximation, I highlighted some parameters in red, okay? Uh, eta tau, beta tau, and alpha tau. This tau is to, to uh, express that these parameters are time dependent, but not they change not with the fast time scale, but with the slow time scale. So they change slowly with time, okay? And the eta has to do with the car centripetal force, beta has to do with the cable centripetal force, and alpha has to do with the corollary force. And you can see here, okay, that the, the car centripetal force, uh, as bigger is the cable, as is lower is the value of this parameter, and the same for the other centripetal force parameter, okay? So the cable is starting long with a long length and the length is starting to decrease with time. So in the dynamics, what we observe is that an increasing of these two parameters with uh, independently of the velocity that we are translating the cable. And here for the parameter related with corollary force, we see that uh, it is relatively stable. You, you can see significantly change of this parameter with the, with the length of the cable, okay? But uh, we also investigated the natural frequency effect, the effect that the variable length may, be, uh, may have in the natural frequency. You can see here the natural frequency associated with the first mode in blue and with the second mode in red. And you can see that the, the first frequency changes very little with the length of the, the, the cable except for very small values, while the second frequency changes a lot and going to very high values for a small length of the cable, okay? And you can see here a simulation for different values of translating velocity. You can see that the behavior of the cable, of the pulling cable is more or less similar, but the frequency of the oscillations change. You have a kind of transient in the beginning, okay, for time equal to zero. And as the, the cable start, the mass start to translate from the right to the left, as indicated by this arrow, you, you see the amplitude of vibration start to increase up to a certain maximum, and then it decreases, okay? This decrease of amplitude here is a kind of nonlinear effect induced by the decrease of the length cable, okay? Uh, we can say that in this point here, the system started to see the influence of the boundary condition here, and 
change drastically its behavior. And this is valid for all the configurations we studied. Okay, but the frequency of oscillation decreases. We can see here an animation of these dynamics, okay, for uh, the translating velocity of six meters per second. You can see this drastically. You can see uh, one pattern in the beginning, then the vibration started to increase up to a certain maximum, and then it decreases. Okay, uh, we developed a new mathematical model for the cable car system, and we done some uh, no, nonlinear analysis on the influence of some parameters. And we, in a future work, we we intend to investigate the influence of more modes in the approximation and the nonlinear uh, and the random uh, effect and the effect of random uh, wind induced loads. Okay. Uh, we acknowledge the institutional and financial support from these institutions, and we acknowledge your attention. Thank you very much.